Hi. So today we're in Penryn, California at Penryn Oak Stables, one of the finest stables in Northern California for training and boarding. And uh, today I'm with professional horse trainer Mike Hughes. Steve, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now Mike is a professional trainer of 20 years who has a specialty in working with problem horses. And what I mean by problem horses is if you've got a horse that bites, bucks, rears, whatever, Mike has dealt with these issues. Today specifically we're going to talk about a subject called cribbing. So Mike, tell us a little bit about cribbing. Okay, Steve, what cribbing is, is when a horse latches onto a solid object with its teeth, pulls back, arches his neck, making a grunting noise. That is one way a horse can crib, and that's the most common way we see horses cribbing. Um, another way is they can rest their head over a solid object and use their throat latch, which would be right in here, press down, uh, doing the same thing as if they actually latch their teeth onto a solid object. You talked a, a little bit about cribbing. What are the what are the causes? Uh, I mean, the, why, root, why the root causes the root causes of cribbing is pain, stress, anxiety, boredom, those types of things. And before you ever get started with your horse, we ask that you do check your horses out for stress, pain, anxiety, boredom, isolation. You know, some horses do have stomach problems, uh, like ulcers, or you know, they have a digestive problem. So get those things checked out first. If your horse is in pain, get that checked out first before you ever start sending your horse through the program. So we're, we're, we're addressing a behavioral habit. Yes. What's out there on the market for critter? Okay, out there on the market, you got collars, you got straps, you got rings, you got shock devices, you got feeds, you got supplements, you got surgery, you got all kinds of things. And to tell you the truth, none of them work. They just don't. And some of the root causes about cribbing is pain, stress, anxiety. And four out of the five anti-cribbing devices that are out there today cause pain, anxiety, and stress. So they're just adding to the problem. They're not taking away from anything. And that, that's basically what's out there today. So it sounds like this is there's no quick fix that's going to solve this there's problem. There's no quick fix. No, it, you're it's, right. it's a behavioral issue. You're, you're correct. So tell me this. How did, you, how did you get involved in cribbing? Well, about five years ago, we had a trainer here. He had a cribbing horse. And about once a month, the horse had to be rushed into the vet because the horse would colic. And cribbing and colic have been associated together. So this horse would be rushed into the vet about once a month. And then shortly after there, the trainer left and went to a different facility. And about a month after that, we heard that the horse had colic once again and died. And even surgery wouldn't have saved that horse. And that really touched me. And after solving so many problems in my lifetime, out of 20 years of solving problems in horses, I knew there had to be a better way to solve this one. All right, so, so I'm here with Tucker today. Tucker is a cribbing horse. And what is Tucker is doing is he's latching his teeth onto this bar right here, and he's pulling back, arching his neck, making a grunting noise. That is the most common uh, cribbing that horses do. And cribbing is so unhealthy for the horses. It's been associated to colic, not to mention the dental bills you get from him wearing his teeth on the tie bar by cribbing. You get overdeveloped muscles, you get skinny horses, and a laundry of other bills, not to mention damage to facilities. And let's get into facilities here a little bit. You know, you go to a facility, one, either the facility is not going to let you come in because you have a cribbing horse, or two, if they do let you in, you're going to get vanished by everybody there. They're going to avoid you like the plague. They're going to complain to the barn manager or owner because they do not want your horse around. They, they don't want their horses around a cribbing horse at all. And they're going to have so much gossip to talk about you. Um, it has been believed that horses can teach other horses how to crib. Plus, the damage, look, you can see right there. I mean, as he cribs, he's actually pushing me back just by me having my arm set right here. He's actually pushing me back. So, you know, it's really unhealthy, and today we're going to start helping uh, Tucker here uh, solve his cribbing problem so he doesn't crib anymore. Okay, so now we're back, and we're going to show you a performance lesson because when you're riding your horses, you can also... Uh, add this into your training program when it comes to solving the cribbing problem with your horse. There's also, you know, you can also do round pinning. We definitely uh, want you to do spook training with your horses. Uh, the spook training will teach the horse how to control their stress. And that'll tie back into crib free because when horses get stressed, they tend to crib. So by doing spook training, what you're going to do is you're going to bring up the spook and then you're going to relax the horse, then bring it up, then relax the horse. Everybody has a different way of spook training and desensitizing their horses. All right, so whichever way you do it, definitely send your horses through a desensitizing or spook training. That will definitely teach the horses how to control their stress and anxiety when those things do happen. Susie, um, um, Susie has been crib-free for about a couple years now. 
and we sent her through the program and she was a pretty major cribber and she doesn't crib anymore. Uh, it took us about six months, a little over six months to send her through the program and uh, I'm going to walk away for a little bit and let her just stand here. Um, See, uh, she does have some other problems that she came with. One is she does grind her teeth, and two, from being a cribber, she was really, really skinny, uh, horribly skinny. And um, so we had to put a lot of weight on her. We had to get her out of cribbing. She still grinds her teeth. I haven't had a lot of time to work her with that one since we've uh, sent her through the cribbing pro uh, program. Yeah. You know, we've gone through some exercises on the ground. We've gone through change of direction on the ground. I showed you a riding lesson. Um, there is spook training and round pinning in the book. You, you, you know, you'll pick out the exercises you actually want to do and go with those exercises. Well, that was a, a, a lot of information. I'd, I'd just like to say thank you, Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I, I learned a ton of information. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's something that I can do. Okay. Exactly. I, I, you can I, do I, it. It does not take a professional trainer to do this. Yeah. You can do it. You come out well, of the like room any time or... Walk around the. I come. I come around the barn this way. I go around a barn that way, Steve. I go up to my house and back. It's kind of depending where the horse is in and it's training at that point. If it's the first day, I'm probably not going to move more than five house, or ten feet. Grab a sandwich, it. come back. You know, knowing in the, that I can sit there and trust that my horse isn't going to crib because I know through this program, I solved the cribbing problem. Well, and and the other thing that 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 I that I think really differentiates your product from the other products that are out on the market is that. You, you focus on the behavioral issues, the, 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 the intangibles. You, you can't give a supplement and sure. think this is going to go away. Right. Uh, you, you, you can't put a strap or a collar or a surgery and think that somehow the horse is going to change its, its, the, way, the way that, you know, its vice, its behavior. Um, it's a practical program. It uses a mm -hmm. lot of common sense. And at the same time, it requires a lot of patience. It does. Uh, and, and, uh, but if you love your horse and you're, and you're willing to, to put that that effort into it, that energy into it, uh, you it sounds like you really can. You can really solve, solve this problem uh, without any of those anti-cribbing devices out there today. This is just a simple two-step training program. So to recap, this is Mike Hughes. Mike Hughes has just brought you a wealth of information about cribbing and, and how to address these issues. I would like to thank, or we would both like to thank. Uh, Penrhyn Oak Stables, yeah, definitely, uh, for for their using their their space and and their and their facilities here. Uh, their website is www.penrhynoakstables.com. Thank you for everything with the Crib Free program. Oh, you're Again, welcome. that was www.crib-free.com, and uh, feel free to go on the site and and send us emails with any of your questions. And um, good luck. Thank you.